Finding a place to keep your valuables at home is challenging. Having a safe, keeping the location a secret is even more difficult than it may seem. To a burglar who has been there before, there are no secrets. Stop the threat starts now. Welcome to Stop the Threat. My name is James Toll. On this week's episode, we take you to Louisiana for an incident we call What's in Your Safe? But before we go, let me introduce you to this week's panel. Wes Doss. Wes has significant operational time with both military and law enforcement tactical operations, as well as protective service organizations. Wes also holds specialized instructor certifications from the U.S. Army and the Marine Corps. Monica Rodriguez. Monica's had 13 years experience as a law enforcement officer in the Florida area. She has participated in undercover assignments with the FBI, the DEA, Border Patrol, ICE, as well as the United States Social Security Administration and the United States Department of Health and Human Services. Monica is currently an executive protection specialist on long-term assignment with a private foundation. Lieutenant Dan Marcou, Lieutenant Dan, as he's normally referred to, has served 33 years in law enforcement, received 15 department citations, three chief superior awards, was made Officer of the Year, SWAT Officer of the Year, and Domestic Abuse Law Enforcement Officer of the Year. Thank you all for being here. Uh, before we go, though, uh, and I show you part one, I just want you to know a little bit about Wes. Uh, when Wes is not here, and he is an active participant here on the show, and we appreciate that, but when he's not here, he is out serving the law enforcement community, and I'm going to let Wes tell us about that. Well, I mean, uh, beyond the, the normal classes and, and programs that we provide, one of the, the big initiatives we're involved in is the Light Sights and Lasers Tour, which is the cost-free training initiative uh, that we travel all over the United States providing a, a block of training to law enforcement totally cost-free. Okay, and uh, from the law enforcement side, all they need to do is contact you and uh, sort of set up a schedule. You interview uh, somebody in the department. I mean, how's it go from there? Physically, if I'm sitting in a department right now going, hey, you know, I'd like to have Wes, what would I do? Well, the, the this year's set, uh, the 10 locations are already picked and chose, so as far as picking up new hosts, that would be for the following year. But uh, what I would do is simply go to the website that, uh, that we have, and right now it's through Excess Sites, is look at the 10 locations and see if any of those 10 locations are within travel distance of, of you or you're willing to come to. Pick which one you want to come to and get yourself registered. Who normally contacts you in the department? Where does that call initiate from? As far as, uh, as, far as hosting the event? Mm. It just depends. Sometimes it's a firearms instructor, sometimes it's a range master, sometimes it's somebody in the administration that's, that's proactive when it comes to training. Okay, let me ask you the big question then. If I am one of those people, can I come to one of the host locations and watch and see what happens? Absolutely. You can actually catch up with uh, Wes on, on his Facebook. Can we say that? Yeah, the Facebook is page okay? is probably the easiest way to, to follow. Social media is the easiest way to keep track of where we're yeah, at. Yeah, and it's kind of fun because Wes gets into that a little bit. When we come back, though, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this first reenactment, kind of get you started on it, give you a hint as what's taking place. We all have a safe. We keep things in the safe to be safe, correct? Now let's see what happens in part one when you come back. Don't go away. Welcome back, viewers. Uh, I'm going to show you part one of what's in your safe. But before I do, I just want to mention the fact that I know that all of us go out and they spend some time trying to find a proper safe for their home. And that is a big decision. Uh, I want to tell you from personal experience that when you pick out a safe, be sure you don't get one with a plastic dial. That's the first thing that burns off. And from then on out, that safe is going to become useless to you. But let's go to part one. We can always discuss that later. Let me show you part one. Good night, sweetie.
me all you got in the safe. Okay, well, um, I think that's a pretty common home invasion, burglary slash whatever, right? Um, uh, I want to just say from the beginning, I think there's a couple of things that could have taken place there to prevent this, and what would one of them be? Don't open the door until you know who's out yeah, there. Yeah, I like that a lot. Absolutely. <laughs> that was the first thought that came to my mind. I mean, yeah, you don't just a, open the door. And she's got a glass door. I mean, right. And she's got a glass door to begin with, right. which is going to be pretty penetrable. Um, having some light. Yeah, it looked a little dark out there, didn't it? Uh, I know that people, for instance, LT, they don't like the automatic lights because, the, you know, the dog set them off or blah, 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 so they don't like the lights coming on and off. The neighbors whine about it. But uh, there was nothing wrong with turning a light on after you hear the door, is there? Also, I tell people to, especially in the day, days of home invasions upon us, I tell them to look where you're not expected to look. In other words, if you stand in front of the door, even with a peephole, they know where you're at. But if you have a, a viewing port somewhere besides right behind the door, it puts you in a position to react. Um, maybe an upstairs window or a side window, rather than just stand in front of the door and open it or stand in front of the door and look in. Yeah, I think you definitely set yourself up for uh, exactly what's going to take place here. If you have a door in your home that's all glass, uh, and, and I, I understand that from an architectural point of view that that's very attractive. Um, but when you, then I think you have to go one more step. Okay, if I'm going to have a glass door, then I need to be aware of certain things that I need to do before I enter the door. And, you know, one of them might be, and I'm just going to throw this on the table, uh, if you're alone, you hear the doorbell, okay, you've turned on the light, you've looked out there and maybe not recognize, what, how about this one? Call out to the imaginary person in your home and say, I'll get the door, I'll, be, I'll get the door. So that now someone outside knows there's more than one person. You like that? That's pretty easy. That's yeah, not too bad. Huh? Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that I do is I don't turn on the lights and I look through the window because that way they can't see me looking out okay. when it's dark outside. Yeah. Well, okay. of course, this guy obviously knows there's a safe in the house, so he may know that you don't have another person in the house, too, though. Yeah, if he's done his homework, you know, maybe he is smart enough. Uh, but even at that, you don't know that. True. So, you know, so, you know I, I might think of, of doing several other things. Have you got any suggestions that, that might have prevented what's about to happen? if it had been, you know, thought of earlier. Dogs, <laughs> for one thing. I love dogs. Dogs right. are the right. number one thing right. that scares a burglar. Right. And I, I know that I have to, when I, someone comes to the door, I know before they're there, and that dog's gonna make plenty of noise. Even a small dog can make plenty of noise. Or <laughs> I'll push a button on a fake dog barking machine. I mean, that's the same as calling out to the imaginary person. Absolutely. Just kind of throw off the bad guy a little bit, right. even if you, because, you know, the fact of the matter is, I think we have all read that, you know, uh, burglaries have been done by people in, in uniform mm -hmm. and who you felt perfectly safe opening the door to, but you're alone. Ah, I think there's some precautions that we need to take there if you're going to be alone. One other thing is that you could also tell them, could you come to the side door? Gives you an opportunity to watch like as they that. go around the building. Yeah, I'll meet you at the back door. Yeah. Whatever. And, and then maybe what you do is secure everything, call 911 and say, right. I got somebody at the door I don't know, and I'm not sure that I want to let them in, mm -hmm. but I'm here on hey, you know, alert law enforcement. Or your neighbor. Right. How about your neighbor? I mean, it, it, I, my first reaction is probably going to be to talk to my neighbor. I don't know that I'm going to go to 911 immediately because I don't feel the threat yet. Uh, but I might call a neighbor and say, hey, I got somebody here knocking on the door. I don't know who they are. I've sent them around the back of the house. Um, you know, what, can you come over? A sense, you know? of, a sense of community in your neighborhood. Oh, that's really important. Is really important and knowing the people next door and who belongs and who doesn't. You can do that without being obnoxiously nosy. And All you right. can do that without a neighborhood watch. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. being part of the neighborhood. Yeah, just being part of the neighborhood, yeah. Exactly. You, you know, you, you have barbecue together once a month anyway, or, you know, you see each other while you're cutting the lawn, whatever the case may right. be. And there's nothing wrong with setting something up and discussing it with them beforehand. When we come back, I'm going to show you part two, and we'll see what develops, so don't go away.
welcome back viewers uh, I'm going to show you part two of what's in your safe um, we've kind of gone over a few things that we think that you should be aware of if you choose a home that has a door that's architecturally attractive and hey I don't blame you for having that home all I think that we would like to uh, add to that is that if you choose to do that then I think you just need to be aware that you need to take certain security precautions for what might take place during the day or at night and let's see what part two shows us and we'll go from there give me all you got in the safe what are you doing back here you took everything the last time well i'm back for your safe now bring me to it be quiet All I've got is coins. Look, why don't you leave and I won't tell anyone you tried to rob me again. Put it in the bag. Here's the money. Doesn't look like much. It's all I have. Take it. <laughs> okay, I think the, um, I think the word back meant something. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, that was huge. Huge. I, it, she has had this happen before, and she evidently didn't take any precautions to prevent it from happening again, which is right. why he knew she had right. a safe. Right. What do you think, LT? Well, it transforms a victim when someone has entered their home. It's mm. hard for under, people to understand that's never happened to mm. them. But when someone comes into your domicile and violates that it changes your whole psyche and that's uh, obviously this woman decided I'm gonna next time I'm gonna have a firearm to protect myself now this individual has returned and I think Monica brought out a good point maybe she added the gun because of the first time mm -hmm. well sometimes when you add a gun it gives you that false sense of security you think you've done enough because now you have a gun but there's other steps that you need to take if you want to protect your home from, you know, situations like this. And she went and got the gun, but she didn't do anything else. Okay. And you would have suggested what then? You know, we talked about that earlier. Maybe looking out the window okay. um, when right. she, you okay. know before opening the door, kind of start, turning kind of the prevent lights it from on. Happening to begin exactly. With. Knowing who's who's okay. at the door, especially okay. if it's at an odd time and she wasn't expecting anybody. Okay, Wes, they're in the house now. You recognize them. They're, they're back. He's back. And now he's got a shotgun, which who knows what he had the first time. And he knows that you have a safe. He knows that you probably have money. My guess is he knows you. He may be from the neighborhood. I mean, we don't know that. But obviously he's done his homework and, and he's returned. So my first instinct is to think that, you know, maybe he's not entirely stable. Well, yeah, or or from a from a you know human perspective, this woman presents herself as a massive ham sandwich out there, and he's coming back just to take a you know to, to eat the sandwich. Mm -hmm. She she's been a repeat victim, you know, and and again, you know, I don't want to backtrack, but I mean, going back to the front door incident, I mean, this guy's been there before and right. robbed you, not burglarized your house, but robbed you. And you let him back into the house, you know. Uh, there'd be certainly be questions. To come into play later on down the line about about well why'd you let him back into the house mm. you know and, the, and you took no preventive steps there you, yeah you had a gun located in your safe but you know I mean you didn't there's there's things that you can layer into the situation that could could have lessened it or, or prevented it from the very get-go yeah okay LT she tried to uh, defend her property 
um, and she chose to pull out the handgun and use it. And we, we know that it was a little awkward by the reports that we received, so we portrayed it as being a little bit awkward. Um, she hadn't spent a, enough time with a trainer, for instance, uh, you know, which might have made that go smoother. But we don't even want to get to that point. But if it gets to that point, um, where do we go from here? Well, I tell you, I, I'm in the could business, not the should business. Mm -hmm. Whether she should have done it, hey, she was there. She was yeah, one right. in that what I call the mud room right. between life and death, where a, a muzzle's pointed at your face and you don't know which door you're going to go out, life right. or death. Yeah, good point. And she has to make a decision. She did some <laughs> things that were positive in making that decision. In other words, she brought the weapon out, concealed it, used the handing over the money as a distraction, got Thank him to mind. lower the weapon oh, enough and look Thank away, you. then fired. But she, she has not gotten to the point where, hey, if I have this firearm, I, I have to not only be physically prepared to use it, but emotionally and mentally prepared. Right. And how do you do that? you train. If I'm going to drive, I'm going to go to a driving school. If I am going to shoot, I am going to learn how to shoot. Not just at targets, but get mentally prepared to point that at someone. She was defending her hearth and home and her family. And so I applaud her decisiveness. Mm -hmm. Okay, she was an older woman. She didn't spend a lot of time on the range. She had been robbed once. She maintained the safe in the house because that's what she wanted. To, that's just the way it is. And now she's being attacked again. Um, uh, tactically, I'm not sure that everything went correct there, except that, hey, I guess it did in this particular instance go right. Um, tactically? Tactically, yeah, she responded and she dispatched him and, and it had the desired effect. There wasn't a tremendous amount of struggle after the shooting and, and it did get him out of the home. Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully the next step. Well, I think I think it ended with her making a call, wasn't it? She was yeah. on the yeah. phone yeah. at the very yeah, end. Of the she ended up with 911. Yeah. Go ahead. I've got just a few seconds, though. She, as he was leaving, uh, he's running away and leaving. The That's threat has point. dissipated, and she didn't fire at him. That's a good point. And when we come back, I'm going to follow up on that point because I know you have asked me a lot of questions about firing that way. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, we have just seen part one and part two of What's in Your Safe? And uh, I think we can probably all agree that there was a, a couple of mistakes made there. Uh, we would want you to think of security in the front of your home uh, and give that some thought. You know, if you have a solid door, uh, you have one more reason to uh, be cautious about opening it. So I know there's some controversy there. You know, I've gotten emails from you saying, James, if the door is solid and I can't see out, uh, and, uh, you know, if you can't see through the little hole, and you know, what do I do? That kind of a thing. I think it's a fair question. Um, what would you do? Okay, you've got the knock on the door. You can't tell who's there. It's a solid core door. What are you going to do? Go. You've got to come up with some kind of alternative. I mean, simply opening up the door into, into, into the nowhere, into some place that's completely unknown, I mean, that's a proactive approach. You know, in this situation, it's happened before, you know, and, and she took steps to arm herself, but it doesn't appear that she did a whole lot since the last robbery took place, except yeah. put a gun in the safe. Right. There's a lot of different things she could do, whether it's cameras or whatever. Yeah, I would say that if you have a solid core door, does anybody want to agree with me or disagree with me? Get into a conversation. Yeah. I mean, start talking to the person. Who are you? Why are you here? Uh, I, you know, and, and they're going to give you a lot of story. And as they're giving you that story, you're going, and you're calling your neighbor, your 911, or whatever. You don't have to make eye contact with them, do you? No, not at all. all right. Right. Not at all. So get into a conversation. If you have the hardcore, uh, the, the hardcore door, uh, and uh, you only have that little peep sight, and you can't see who's there, and they're knocking, and they're saying, "I'm so and so," get into a conversation with them. Find out who they are, and at the same time, make your call. Okay, I've got an email, and, it, and, and I've got to read this one to you um, because I get this one a lot. Uh, have you seen situations that could have been handled better with non-lethal options? You always want to consider all of your options, everything from disengaging to dialogue, empty hand all the way to deadly force. The thing is, if what we're doing here is we are preparing you to make those decisions because we won't be there. 
This is called when-then thinking. Start thinking about these situations. When this happens, then I will do this. Something okay. as simple as, you know, maybe I'm going to put a second door on the outside so there are two layers of protection. Even if I get this first door open, he, that outdoor is secured from the inside when I'm mm -hmm. home. And that's what you do. You think when, then thinking. There are some simple things that you can do. This side of deadly force and the more you've thought or the more you're physically prepared, the more you train, the more options you have. You know, the, the bringing in a less lethal or a less than deadly force option, people have to remember that, that the ability to use that or transition from that to another level of force is training. If you aren't trained to do it, training. You, you'll rely on something that isn't going to have the desired effect, it may not have the desired effect, and you may be stuck not being able to move from that into another option. Remember that you look at law enforcement and you say, well, I want to do what they do. Well, there is a certain level of training that does take place where we are trained to transition from option right. to option. Right. Okay, we're going to have to go, and I, I appreciate all of you being on the panel. I think this was a good reenactment, and uh, I think we have probably left the audience with something. I want to leave you with this, though. Uh, using your gun could save your life, but using your head could save your assets. Be safe, be trained, be alert. See you next week.